Do you eat raw eggs? Yeah, I make, I make, um, uh, eggnog. Eggnog, yeah, so we did. Do you eat cooked eggs? Yeah. How do you cook your eggs? Well, right now I'm taking, um, coconut oil, and I take sunflower seeds, and I coat the bottom of the pan, and I chop up garlic or onions, and then I crack eggs into it and just scramble the whole thing, and man, it's awesome. It's really good. Mm -hmm. How else would you cook eggs? Well, I've, I've, I've um, you know, soft boiled is probably the best for you. I've fried them, but I'm always just doing new stuff. Just, you know, like I, I really like sunflower seeds, and they really taste good with eggs, and I have always good, you know, onions and garlic and stuff to chop. I mean, just why not add to it because it's just good. <laughs> <coughs> hey, your potatoes. Let's see here. Uh, can you ask Paul if he puts his potatoes in his cooler or if he leaves them in the ground and whichever he does, how long will they last? I put them in wooden boxes. I stack my pump house, which has a has a 125-gallon um, water tank, which maintains 45 degrees all year, so in the cooler that's the summer. In the winter it's a heater. And I still have potatoes there now that I'm eating. And I, I eat them almost the whole year and they stay great. They're sprouting now, but they're still good to eat and look, I spread the sprouts off. So it really works well. And what does the temperature stay in there? Because there's a tank, a water tank, 105 gallons, it maintains 45 degrees, which in the summer is a cooler, in the winter that's a heater. So it's very awesome. See, it never, <clears throat> never freezes back there because my water tank's there and water's going through all the time. Oh. What do you use your oat roller for besides making rolled oats for oats? That's all I use it for. That's, I mean, I just, that's what it's there for. Because I love oats. And when you roll them and you put them in water, they stay alive. See, people don't realize that as soon as you crack a seed, it dies. So all organic flour you buy is dead food. Mm. All organic rolled oats you buy are dead food. So I take my live oats and I roll them. They're alive. I put them in a, in a dish of water so they stay alive. So all night long they swell up and they get soft. I have maple syrup, some um, raisins, and it's the most delicious oats. And it's like oatmeal except that it's not cooked because it's sat in water, it's got soft, and it's still live food. And I'm telling you, I can go the whole day on that. It's amazing, incredible good food. That leads us to our next one. Where do you buy your grains or other five gallon jug food from that we've seen in the videos inside Azure. the house? Where? Azure. Azure? Okay. Is there like they're, a city they're, or? They're, a... they're like a company who gets all this live food, you know, or um, in bulk. They'll show up in your community with a truck, like at a church or something. But it's called Azure Standard. And it's just a, a real good source for getting bulk stuff, very reasonable, all organic, clean stuff. And the wife of the guy who runs it is a new wife. My wife knows, knows, knows him. Is that something you do like once a year or once well, every 20 when years? Well, my kids were here probably once a month, but now they're not here, we don't hardly, I still have oats that I had. The benefit about live oats is they'll last for a lifetime. You know, It's not going to go bad. So, um, But now with my kids gone, I just you know, have nothing we need because I can grow it all. You know. What is the recommendation from you or Paul, well, it's going to be Paul, as to where to buy safe wheat for, or corn for home grinding? The only place to get wheat today is Europe. Nothing in the U.S. is real. It's all been genetically modified. You know, my wife goes to Europe, you know, and she says, man, the bread there tastes so good. Uh, since when in the U.S. did that take place? It's been a long time, quite a long time. Uh, 1985? Or? I think long before that. Oh, okay. You remember, remember our anthem, Amber Ways of Grain? We used to grow four and five feet tall. Hmm. Man, it's a, it's a foot, foot and a half. It's, it's all been done for convenience, mm -hmm. easy harvesting. Mm -hmm. but, and you remember when you were young, gluten was not a word. Yeah. No one ever mentioned it because it wasn't in your wheat. Mm -hmm. See, all these things that are affecting our health that are killing us has all come from changing, altering the natural order. It's huge. It's really amazing, and people don't get it. And so, like I say, if you want to get good wheat, you got to go to Europe because you're not going to find it in the U.S. Do you know any sources over there? I don't know. I said my wife goes there and eats it, and she says, "Man, the bread is so different because it's wheat." Let's see here. Is that food? Now, now, um, 
Sand Hill Preservation Center has an amazing selection of corn seed. It's all clean, organic, non-GMO, and they have an amazing amount. It's really a good place to get corn. Okay, here's some random questions, and usually I wouldn't put some of these in, but why not, right? You're here. Um, <laughs> uh, let's start with, okay, has Paul started grounding himself while sleeping? And I if do, so, has it helped? I do every night, I've noticed no change. But every night I ground myself. What is grounding yourself? I have a, um, I pl plug in a plug into my out outlet in my house, which is ground, and I'm wearing this wristband with a metal thing that grounds me. <laughs> and so I, I wear it every night. Okay. But um, my frustration is with all the stuff, all these supplements and everything everybody says works on everybody, I get absolutely no effect. And it just blows me away. Like, I think, like, how come? You know, what's the... And it's just like, it's frustrating. I mean, it's, this stuff works so good, I take it like nothing. You know? People, I, there's this whole film about grounding up there in Alaska. People just get an amazing healing, you know? And I've been grinding, but I think I'm pretty well grounded just in life because I'm always climbing trees, I'm always in the dirt. And so I don't think I'm that far off, you know? Except, you know, now I'm wearing shoes, but it's just, as much as I can, I'm on the ground. So I, when I'm climbing trees, man, the trees are connected to the ground, they're rooted, I'm touching them. So I'm really sensing that I've been pretty grounded. And so, it's, but I'm, I still do it. You know, I'm just doing the best I can. I'm not going to be, not going to take, it can't hurt. <laughs> What are Paul's views on aliens and UFOs? I don't know. That's my view. I really don't know. It could happen. Yeah. May exist, may not. Well, I know about the Bigfoot. You know, that, that was a thing that happened in Genesis when the angels had intercourse with women. And there were giants. And you had records of them, Goliath and Sai hunting and Amorites and, and Og. You know, they were nine, t 12 feet tall. And there's all kinds of evidence around where I live here of them showing up and of them, you know, making sounds and and their and their and their um, visible footprints and stuff. So I know they're they're real, but um, that's all I know. Do you stock your pond over there with fish? I did when my kids were here, but I don't know. Because so I had to stock it with fish, I had to put three thousand gallons of water into it every year to keep it keep it up. It was a great place for swimming. It was awesome, clean water, but. I don't want to waste 2,000 gallons a day today because there's, my kids aren't here. Anymore. Not using it. Um, are rhubarb leaves poisonous? If so, why does my wildlife eat them? Well, I've never seen my chickens won't eat them. I, I, that's amazing because I, my chickens will not eat rhubarb leaves and I take it all in there, but they will not touch it. Like deer and stuff won't? Well, I've never seen that happen, so I don't know. Okay. Works for me. I just know my chickens won't. I wonder what Paul thinks about Yellowstone's super volcano that's, I think, more than overdue to erupt. I think a lot of things are going to happen. It, it, you know, it says in the end that everything that can't be shaken will be shaken. Two thirds of the population will be killed. And we're, we're coming into some really devastating things. It's talking about major earthquakes, and they're already happening more than ever. You know, so stuff's coming down, you know, and, and uh, my sense is, is it's not God being angry. These are all consequences of man's poor choices and poor stewardship. You know what earthquakes are more often? It's very obvious. You know how the shock goes over your car works? Right. What's in right. it? Oil. You know, God has had pockets of oil on the earth from day one because the earth is always moving on its place. And as it moves, it has this shock absorber to take up the shock. Now as we've taken all the oil out of the earth, when it moves, it's got great big holes to fall into. This is why the earthquakes are more often and more large, because we've created the environment for them. It's our fault. How old is Paul, and what is his birth date? My birth date is December 16, 1949. I'm 65. Okay. Uh, this one we talked about earlier. Someone mentioned that your rake looks different than one you had in the documentary. Is this the same rake? And what is the make, and where did you get it? The first one in the document was Union, and it was well made in the U.S. Now they're made in Japan, they're junk. The one I'm using now is Razorback, because it's the only one made here is good. And so that's what I have. My Union, I still have, but I broke it, and so I have a, a, a piece going across it, so it's just not as nice as my other one. But I still use it, and it's fine. The holster you use for your printing shears and your saw, 
Where did you get that? Who Bishop, makes it? Bishop Company in Los Angeles. It's an arbor supply and they have all kinds of good stuff. Everybody asked me that. That's probably Yeah, Bishop a big is great. One. That's where get, I get my pruning saw, my everything. This is a, a good source. Trees. What type of sequoia redwood trees does Paul have and does he collect their seeds? Sequoia seeds are amazing. They only will be germinate the fire. It takes a fire to open them up. And um, now see there's two, there's, see that there's, there's, there's a Diodorus seed and then there's a redwood right there with, with the top that's kind of scarce. That's it, that's, I got out of, um, you know, up, up, up there in, um, in, in redwoods, I guess I on the road bought that. And those are all sequoias along the driveway. So I have both, both the redwoods here. So if the sequoia seeds only come out in the case of, say, a fire, how do people make new well, maybe trees? They, maybe they uh, actually heat, heat them up and extract them. I'm not sure, but um, I bought all those trees 18 years ago at 6 to 8 and start. Someone had planted by seeds. I think boiling, boiling water will do it okay. <laughs> for like yeah, three minutes. Mm -hmm. How long until you can graft other varieties onto a tree? So like a one-year-old, two-year-old tree. Anything, yeah, you can graft it into a stump. And actually how the trees happen is they're grafted into rootstock. You know, so all your trees today are, are grafted. And that's where you starting to use grafts. So say that one-year, two-year-old tree that you have over there, you could take another variety and just graft into it, yeah. graft into it right now. Mm -hmm. yep. So right away. Um, what apple rootstock does Paul select when he buys his apple trees? Dwarf. Always dwarf. I think they're thinking more of like a M111 names. or... I don't, I don't know the names, I just make sure they're full dwarf. Okay. Because they get too big. <laughs> I'm trying, I want small trees and it's not happening. <laughs> Are there smaller plum trees than the ones that you have? They don't have a lot of space, but they'd really love to have plum trees. I don't know that, that plum trees you know, like, you know, they just grow fast. Like this plum tree here will put on shoots eight feet long every year. You know, and it's a dwarf tree. But it's just, it's like a cherry. There's no such thing as a dwarf cherry. They just grow fast. So, you know, you know, cherries and, and plums, I don't care who they are, they're not going to be small. So give them space. Do you know what tree Paul uses as a pollinator for his fruit trees? I read that the honey, honey crisp requires a pollinator tree. All apples require another pollinator, they're not self-fertile. And so that's you know, the advantage of having multiple varieties, and that's also the advantage of grafting into your existing tree, because you'll have it all there. Now, you were talking about pruning, I mean not pruning, grafting other varieties onto the apple trees. But I remember you saying before that you have to kind of watch out about that yeah, because no, some of them are just... Gravenstein, for instance, is very scary. Don't ever graft gravenstein in anything because it gets huge. You can graft into gravenstein, but don't put gravenstein in something else because the branch will just so overweight the rest of the tree because they really grow fast. They're very vigorous. So, but that's the only one that I've really seen to be, everything else seems to be pretty okay, but the gravenstein is just like, watch out. Uh, we're going to talk about planting a bit. <clears throat> Has he ever grown or thought about growing, well, I'm going to mess this up, Morgana Mul Mulganae? Don't know what it is. Okay. Next. So I'm going to say no is the answer to that. Just don't know. Uh, where does Paul recommend getting asparagus bulbs and when do, when should, let's try this. I'm in New England. Where does Paul recommend getting asparagus bulbs and when should I plant? You're in the perfect place because the best asparagus, and they're not bulbs, they're actually crowns, come from Fedco seed, which is in Maine. And the variety that I really recommend is called Purple Passion. And uh, you order them in the winter in their catalog and they'll send them to you first thing in spring. If you put them in good wood chips, I planted mine in April and I ate asparagus in June. I was amazed. 
because they're really nice grounds. This one we already hit, but how or how does Paul get his rows so straight? My what? Your rows in the garden? A, a, a string. Two, two sticks and a string. When Paul plants leeks, does he make the wood chips higher around the leek to make the white part of the leek larger? Does he plant it deeper, or does it matter to him how long the white part is? Nothing matters. Let's plant the seeds and get out of there. See, that's the thing I love about Paul. You'll ask him like a three-word question, and sometimes it'll take a half hour, right? And then you ask him a question, and sometimes he's like, nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what kind of strawberries do you grow and why? This one here, I don't know the name. The guy gave, he gave me three plants and he died. I have no idea the name, but it is amazing. And I give, I've given those to everybody all over the place. And it's just, I don't know this thing. But they're June bearing, if I remember? This, yeah, this, yeah, this is a, a it's, you know, what I found is that ever bearing are not as sweet as a once a year bearing. You know, if you get them all year long, they're not as good. The ones that bear once, are, these here, they get like golf ball size. They're incredible the size. And the flavors, is like over the top. This whole guy gave me says, this is really a good strawberry. He gave me three plants. That was like five years ago, and I'd given boxes away. This is just amazing how this stuff just spreads out and multiplies. Okay. So I'm just doing a weird thing on me, so I'm going to get a different angle on you here. still hitting you, but it's okay. You're good. What are your favorite potato varieties and why? I love the um, German Butterball because it's huge, amazing baking potato. And there's one, I don't know the name of it, but the guy gave it to me. It's, it's, it's a yellow flesh. Yukon Gold? No, Yukon Gold's worthless. It's, like the, it came from, um, from, um, Oh, um, what's it? Um, shoot, the original plant was a. Uh, oh, what can I think of it? It's a yellow, um, yellowfin. Came from Finland, yellowfin, and that's a really good one. But the Yukon Gold is really bland, as far as I'm concerned. It's no flavor. There's one I have that he, this guy gave me. It's, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, a, um, a darker flesh, but it's a yellow meat. But what's amazing about it when it blooms? It's a purple flower and it blooms the whole summer. I've had people drive by my place to have it growing and says, what are those flowers you're growing? Those aren't flowers, those are potatoes. I mean, the, the bloom is just like over the top, and I don't know the name. Just He gave me some, and I grow them because they're just good, and I love the color, but don't know the name. But Yukon Gold, like, and that, and that, and that, not Yukon Gold, but that, that German Butterball is huge. Really a good yellow potato. It's awesome. Does Paul have any wisdom on the best way to plant onion starts? The best place to plant onion starts is not use starts, it's just plant seed. It's a lot easier. <laughs> you know, the whole idea of starts is someone grew those and they moved them so they're stressed. You just put seed in the ground, it's going to grow. You do the same thing they did. I mean, why, why you have them do it for you? <laughs> How would Paul plant sweet potatoes, obviously, if he could? Uh, they send sprouts out in the end. Uh, you are then to tear them off and root them in water and then plant them. No hilling. They grow in dirt. I'm wondering if they might would grow on top of the ground like white potatoes. I'm going to give it a try this year. Go for it. It'll work. I tell people that I just plant the sweet potatoes like you do any potato. They always tell me that man, they're amazing. I forget the amount. Someone told me the pounds they got just was incredible. And all it is is lay them on top of the grass, put eight inches of wood chips over it, and they had so many. It could not believe it. They're so you would do it just like your regular just like potatoes. Just like potatoes. Again, it's the same thing as a potato. It has eyes and it sends shoots out and it grows. So just put it in the ground and cover it. And get out of there. Would you worry about cutting off the ends and 
letting them root and water and all that. This whole thing about messing with nature is totally stupid and doesn't work. All these, remember I tell you to cut potatoes and plant little ones. Well done, you plant the whole potato, it feeds the potato as it grows, each shoot sends out a shoot, so you get a lot more. Plant a big one, you get more back. I mean, cutting stuff is just dumb. I mean, it's an effort and then you're reducing your volume. It's just, I don't get where people come from. <laughs> you mentioned planting the eight foot tall, yeah. You mentioned planting an eight foot tall blueberry bush. Do you remember the name of it? No, I don't, but if you go to, um, Let's see, um, Burnt Ridge Nursery Orchard, they have a catalog, and the catalog will tell you. I forgot its name. Does the wasabi grown in wood chips produce the rhizome, the tuber, that you can sell for like $100 a pound? Well, they're right there. It's, I mean, wasabi grows like wasabi grows. It's not going to be different anywhere else. It's just in ground. It has a good root system and it does fine. Any tips for growing artichokes in a garden which experiences frosts? Well, I, people, they grow artichokes. I've grown artichokes here. Um, frost didn't hurt them. They, they'll die back. They come back from the roots. I notice Paul doesn't do any vertical gardening outside of the trees and grapevines. Does he prefer bush beans over pole beans and why? Two reasons. One is you have to stake them, and two, I can't even begin to use all the beans on my bushes. What would I do if I had something more? <laughs> I mean, really, I can't begin to use the bush beans. What am I going to do with this big old tall, you know, heavily productive pole bean? <laughs> I have too much already. Why would I want to make it harder for myself? 